Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Welcome to Grace this morning. The place is a buzz with the Christmas concert today. <laughs> oh, it's good to to see you all here, and uh, we just uh, trust that uh, that we'll have a a, a good morning, and uh, and also stay for if you didn't know. We are having a Christmas meal today as well, so uh, everyone's welcome to, to stay for the, the meal afterwards as well. So, so welcome, and uh, I think there may be a few people joining in on, on Zoom. Are there people on Zoom? They're waving at us. Yeah, yeah okay, good. <laughs> welcome this morning. Um, briefly, a few, just a few announcements. I, th I think most of our programs are, uh, are off now for this week. Um, but there is Young Moms Bible Study. I think that's, that's still on. Yes, okay, Wednesday morning is Young Moms Bible Study. Um, and is there connection this week? I didn't get asking you guys. Uh, no connection this week. Okay, so the Cornerstone, Youth Group, um, th those aren't, aren't happening this, this week. And, and no Tuesday evening Bible Study. Um, but there is a Christmas Eve service. So Saturday evening at, at seven, we'll gather again uh, for that that time of uh, of singing and uh, and and teaching. Um, also, for those that are involved in the uh, choir for for Christmas uh, our Christmas Sunday service, um, you'll be meeting later today. So the the choir practice at uh, at seven o'clock tonight. I understand if that's still on. Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. So choir practice tonight at 7. And I think that's that's about it for this week. Anything else that we're missing? The busy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's enough. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we're going to open with uh, with a scripture reading as we uh, as we begin our, our time of worship and and then move into our uh, 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 program. Uh, so I'm going to ask Mark to come and read from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14, and then Susie will open in prayer. Shall we, uh, Steve? Two, eight to fourteen. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> the shepherds <clears throat> and the angels, and in the same region, <clears throat> excuse me, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and <clears throat> an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you came down, Lord God, to save us, Lord God, that you loved us so much, Lord, that you came from the manger to the cross. And Lord, this morning we pray that your name would be lifted up. And Lord, that we would uh, hear from you, Lord, today, that your word, Lord, would not return to you void. And we pray that you would uh, speak through every part of the service, Lord, and uh, that your will would be done, Lord, and that people would come to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we have some, uh, some choruses to be begin as we 
sing praises and the Lord's going to lead us.
Give us the light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star, the hope of rest for the redeemed, the good and blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now that star divine. Brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon us until the glory dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the way into the land of perfect day. Beautiful star. And now uh, Dave is going to lead the choir in a number here, right? <laughs> Time, because she thought we were doing more than one tune. We're doing it next week. Uh, a little bit of a, more of a presentation, but um, enough of that. Bethlehem. How appropriate. Um, all those sacrificial lambs had to come from somewhere, right? <laughs> and Bethlehem was the place where the majority of the sacrificial lambs were raised for Jerusalem. And all around Jerusalem, there's these agricultural buildings, towers. They're still there. And um, when a lamb would be born, they would be brought into these buildings, and they had to be unblemished and they would thrash around. So when they were born, they'd be wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a cutout in the rock in this building called a manger. So I can't help but wonder if that's exactly where the Lamb of God was born, in one of these agricultural buildings in a manger, where exactly the sacrificial lambs were laid. No, um, I digress, don't I? I do that. <laughs> this tune... Um, I don't know, it's a blur. I must have written it 30, 35 years ago for a, for a Christmas cantata that we did. Um, and I tried to capture the panic and the anxiety and the confusion and the discombobulation of, we need a place to stay. Imagine your wife's about to give birth and, and there's no place to lay your head. Right? I remember when my first daughter was born rushing to the hospital, and you saying, don't stop. <laughs> I may have run a red light. <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> anyway, so, if you sense a certain uh, confusion, it's, it's intended. Thank you, <laughs> You're welcome. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is blue. 
fun of it. <laughs> In the confusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got it on my course. <laughs> Oh, good job. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to invite uh, Sharon and Joan Rosa's class. And this is the first Noel. Thank you so much. That was really good. So next we have, um, we're going to do our lighting of the Advent wreath. And I think Julio and Sarah Jane are, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It works? Yeah, okay. Good morning. Um, it's supposed to be five or six more people with me. And of course, it's the shyest person left. Good morning. <laughs> um, the word Advent comes from the Latin word that means coming. On the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Day, we're taking time to look back at the first coming of Jesus as we look as well as to look forward with anticipation to the second coming of Jesus. This is a time to prepare our minds and hearts for the coming of Jesus and to rejoice in all that Jesus is to us. To help us celebrate, we continue to light the candles of the Advent wreath. On the first Sunday, we light the candle of hope. 
I think. Well, this one. <laughs> On the second Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. On the third Sunday, we lit the candle of joy. And today, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of love. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In 1 John 3, 1, we read this. So what kind of father, love the Father, has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. In view of this great love of God for us, Jesus says this in John 13, 34 and 35. A new command I give to you, that you love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, your greatest gift of love to your people. Fill our hearts with such love, opening our hearts to accept your great love for us. Overflow my heart with love so I may pour it out onto the world. Help us to love others as you, as you have loved me, even those who aren't so easy to love. For following you means loving others as you love us. Lord, thank you for your great gift of Jesus as we celebrate Christmas. May I ever walk in your love and show the world that we are your disciples by the love we show to others, keeping Jesus, your Son, close to our hearts. Amen. Do I leave this here? <laughs> I mean, thank you, Sarah Jane. Now we have a special piano piece, uh, or two pieces. Gracie is going to play Away in a Manger and Joy to the World. All right. Thank you, Gracie. Beautiful.
And now we can all join in singing together, um, Good Christian Men Rejoice. So we'll just uh, maybe, maybe stand together as you're able to stretch your legs. <laughs> seated. And now we're going to invite, invite Holly's class to come up. Okay, so I think at this point, then we'll um, we'll dismiss the children involved in the Christmas play. Is that right, Joy? Yeah. So those involved in the play can go ahead out to prepare. Um, okay, good. We'll do that, and then uh, and we'll yeah, we're gonna sing "I Will Serve Thee" now in a moment. So. Um,
So as we've been uh, uh, receiving our tithes and offerings through, uh, through the online uh, method of, of giving and as well uh, the offering box, which, which is at the door, which um, um, the, the offering is, is really for those who, uh, who love the Lord and uh, who he has called as, as all believers to, to, uh, to take part. He's really given us that privilege to take part in, uh, in the ministry and in serving and in, in recognizing his lordship. And that, that's, that's what it is, is for. So it's, it's not, a, not a, a plea to, uh, to everyone to, to give. It is... It is uh, really uh, God calling each of us in our hearts uh, to uh, to give to him in in recognizing the lordship that he has uh, for those who have uh, faith in him and and trust him and so we we're thankful for uh, the gifts that he gives to us and and really all that he gives to us both materially and and even uh, the ability to do things that that's for us to, to serve him and, and glorify him and so as we recognize that just now, we will uh, we'll sing, I uh, will serve thee, and, and then we will pray. So let's stand once again as you're able. Father, we just uh, bow before you uh, again, just to to recognize your lordship in in our lives. That that as we trust you, as we've faith in you, we recognize that uh, that we are not our own. We we uh, we belong to you, uh, as you have uh, purchased us through uh, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, who who died for for us to redeem us, uh, to to take the wrath of God upon Himself that we deserved. Uh, that that we would be forgiven and be brought into a new life, a new abundant life uh, with with you. And and so, Father, we're we're thankful for all that you uh, have done for us, all that you are doing. And we pray that that as we give of the the tithes and offerings that we give, and as we serve you, we we want to do this all to your honor and, and glory. And we pray that that you would bless the gifts that are given and may they be used to spread the love of Jesus and the gospel message uh, around, uh, throughout our community and, and around the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And I think we're ready for the play. A Christmas mix-up. A long, long time ago, at least last year, there lived a family with a lot of ants. Sally, Sally, Sandy, Celine, Cindy, Sari, Shirley, Steffi, and Sondell. Now each aunt in turn got married, and in the course of time started a family. And that meant that there were lots of children and lots of cousins. Every year at Christmas, all the cousins from far and wide would come home to the family farm for Christmas holidays. Their names were George, Georgie, Georgina, Justin, Justina, Justine, Jenny, Ginny, Jen, Jen, Jackie, and Jilly. They were a very creative family when it came to naming their children. <laughs> One Christmas, it just so happened that the aunt had not quite finished Christmas shopping by the time everyone arrived, and so off they went to shop, leaving the three oldest heroic teens to babysit. This is the story of what happened that fateful night. We are doomed! What were they thinking leaving us all alone with all 
of these kids. <laughs> Georgina, you passed your babysitter's course, right? Nope. Point them three times. <laughs> you, Georgie? I refuse to take the babysitter's course. I don't like kids. They scare me. What about you, George? No, but how hard can it be? We're done. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to have to get the kitchen and take charge. That's a great idea. What are you going to do? Me? I am only the dreamer. I come up with the plan of action. Someone else is the thinker that fills in the details of the plan of action. And someone else is the hero who puts the plan of action into action. Okay, okay. Well, at least I have taken the course. Three times. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give it a try. Okay, guys. Who wants to play again? Me! Oh, no. I remember the last time that I played Floor Zone. And no TV for two weeks. And I still have the scarf from last time. Me, too. I know, let's play piñata. Here, George, you can be the piñata. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going to fall for that one again. <laughs> Let, let's keep thinking. I know, you three can be the camels from the Christmas story, and Jen, Jen, Jane, and I can write, can be the three wise men from the Christmas story, and you'll ride us all the way around the barn, and all the way around the house, and all the way around the lake. But I want to go too. Well, you can't, because everybody knows there's only three wise men. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's not necessarily true. The Bible doesn't say that there were three wise men. There may have been fewer or even more. Uh-uh, we have an activity scene at home, and we have uh, three camels and three wise men. Actually, George is right. People often think there was three wise men because there's three gifts. Actually, I know one of the wise men's names. You do? Yeah. One of the wise men's names are Frank. What do you mean, Justin? Well, in the Bible, it says that the wise men brought gold, Frank brought incense and myrrh. He must have been a very important wise man for the Bible to name it. <laughs> Actually, the wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Oh. oh. Well, I know the most important angel's name. That's easy. It was Gabriel because Gabriel got to announce Jesus' birth to Mary. Nope. What was it then? Gloria. It was not Gloria. It was too. The Bible says it. It says Gloria in the highest. See? Gloria, Gloria must have been the most important because she got to be the highest. <laughs> Um, the Bible actually says that the angels said, Glory to God in the highest. How many angels were there? A lot. Like more than five? Yes. Like more than 25? Yep. Like more than 105? Like more than 1,005? More than 1 million and five? There was lots, okay? The Bible doesn't exactly say how many angels there was, but it says there was a host of angels praising God and telling the shepherds that the Christ child had been born. Why? <laughs> because the shepherds left them in the fields and took off to Bethlehem. They must have been scared and lonely. Well, maybe they left one shepherd behind. Or maybe they brought the sheep with them. Or maybe a wolf came and... <laughs> Georgina! Failed the babysitter's course three times, eh? What? I wish I could have seen the star. I wish I could have seen baby Jesus. I wish I could have a big bowl of ice cream. Nice <laughs> try. Well, at least mine could possibly happen. You know, this is giving me a great idea. How about we put on a play of our own and we can sh surprise our families with, with it when they get home? That's a great idea. What do you guys think? Yeah! And so that group of cute, courageous, creative Inca and Inca cousins began furiously working on creating a nativity play that would be unforgettable. They raided the barn, grandma and grandpa's attic, and their parents' suitcases to come up with just the perfect sets and costumes. They read through the account of Jesus' birth in both Matthew and Luke. 
All afternoon they worked with only three breaks for hot chocolate and maybe one for ice cream. And by the time their parents came home, they were finally ready. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her for her firstborn baby, a son. And she gave birth to her, um, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory, uh, wait, no, keeping up the watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph. And the baby. Who <laughs> was lying in a manger. <laughs> Let's go to the we found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. <laughs> When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judah, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, to Jerusalem. King Herod, Magi from the east, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Christ was to be born, in Bethlehem and Judah, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. Was, had written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah, are by no means amongst the rulers of Judah. For you will come a ruler who will be a shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you may find him, report to the child. Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, 
report to me so that I too may go and worship him. <laughs> After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where this child was. <coughs> when When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped and presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. Well, of gold, the gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warmed in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And so the Christmas account of Jesus' birth was shared, and the family was all touched by their children's dramatic endeavors. And if the ants noticed a hot chocolate sugar high in the children, they did not mention it, but rather rejoiced in the fact that their children had spent time reflecting on the true meaning of Christmas and portraying an accurate account of the birth of Jesus in Scripture, and that no new scars had been added to their broods by another game of the floor is lava. And it is said that they did also notice the difference in the children that year and how they played together more kindly and how they listened to their parents more quickly and how on Christmas Day in the centerpiece on the table, some little fingers had carefully replaced the poncettas and garlands and tiny bills with grandma's wooden nativity scene. And Aunt Sally, Sally, Sandy, Celine, Cindy, Sari, Shirley, Steffi, and Chantel thought how appropriate a change that was and how this was truly the best Christmas ever. The end. Wonderful. That was a great job, you guys. We enjoyed that play <laughs> very much. Um, so I got uh, the tech th thumbs up. If if Holly's willing to uh, to come back up again, uh, the technical part is ready. <laughs> It's just to get the human cooperation part in. <laughs> there we go.
join in. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna. Come on, stay close.